Hi guys and welcome to this, the second part of a two video series dealing with the operations with negative fractions. If you haven't already done so, there is a video that I've just done, a little bit of a recap for negative numbers. Negative numbers are going to deal very much, or be used very much in this negative fraction stuff, so go back and watch it. If you haven't already done so, subscribe by clicking that little doohickey over there on the left, and there's a website where you can find all of these videos by textbook, by chapter, and with downloadable notes. So just sign up to mathsguru.com and life's a good one. Greatly appreciate it if you will. Now, as a very quick recap, we just did a video, I just did a video on the four rules. A positive and a positive, and a negative and a negative are equal to one positive. Yes, so that's either for multiplication or division, or a little bit of a shortcut or a trick that we'll show you in just a moment. If we do a positive and a negative, or a negative and a positive, because they are different, then they become one negative. We've done this previously in year seven or year eight, and so hopefully you guys are ready to make this work. So these were just the examples I did just a moment ago, and well, remember, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing fractions is really, really important. If you can understand how to do that, if you understand negative numbers, we're just gonna put the two of them together and just try and, well, trick you, yes, but if you know your stuff, probably not. So I'm gonna actually kick straight into some examples from the Cambridge uh, Essential Series of Textbook Year 8, and thank you very much to Cambridge for allowing me to use these. If you haven't watched the previous video, I know it's 40 minutes long, watch it on double speed, that shows you how to add, divide, multiply, and subtract fractions, head on over there and do that, because otherwise this is gonna get a little bit like But if you're ready to go, here we go. There's something like eight examples, maybe more, I don't know, but every example I do, you can stop, rewind, follow it through, do what you can to get this stuff fixed firmly in your head. The rest of the maths course will actually thank you for it. Okay, so we have here, now remember the brackets, the brackets are there just to help you see that negative sign. I always rewrite the question out without the brackets to give me plus minus five on seven. Now, the minute I say plus minus, when in maths have we ever seen a plus and a minus written side by side? We haven't. So our brain now should be going boop, 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 boop to actually help us realize that that's got to be changed. Going back to our four rules, what do we know a positive and a negative are? Yep, they're different, so it becomes a negative. So now, all I'm gonna do is replace that positive and negative with a negative. Now, if you go back to the previous video, if you remember, I said if there's a times or a divide, ignore the signs. This isn't a times or divide. This is a plus and a minus question. The plus and a minus, I can't see a times, I can't see a divide. There we go, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, our negative number stuff is pretty much finished now because I'm back to the fraction stuff. Are we adding or subtracting a fraction? We are. So if you remember, the bottoms have got to be the same. Are my bottoms the same? They are indeed. So that becomes on seven. That becomes two minus five. And then obviously, ladies and gentlemen, here we hit another issue with negative numbers. Two take away five is, it isn't three, it is negative three. So the answer to this would be minus three on seven. One final check you would need to be able to do here is does it need to be canceled down? And in this situation, it doesn't, and there we go. The next example, pretty much identical. The bracket is there to make us see that minus sign. So I'm gonna write this out as two thirds minus minus four thirds. Minus minus, it just speaking out loud makes me sound a little bit weird there. Minus minus, what does that even mean? Well, a minus and a minus, we're not doing a times, we're not doing a divide question, so I have to process that now. And what do we know two negatives become? A positive, absolutely. So that becomes two thirds plus four thirds, and we are now adding fractions. So the negative number stuff, we're done with you. Thank you very much, bye bye, sayonara. We're adding two fractions together. So when I add fractions together, I have to check the denominator. Is the denominator the same? I should cocoa. So that stays as a three. The top numbers then just add, which gives me six on three. Is that my final answer? No, it is not, because three and six both go into, or are divisible by three. So I'm gonna do some canceling down. Threes go into there twice. Threes go into there once. So I can now write that fraction as two on one, and that's my, no, it isn't my final answer, because remember, dividing by one is just a whole number. So that gives me my final answer of two. And again, if you're not sure what's going on here, there is a previous video that explains all of this stuff. It's the one before this one. All right, we're going to now do plus and a minus. 
The examples become fairly repetitive, but follow through with me. We've got the brackets again. They're just there to help me see that minus sign. So one fifth plus minus one quarter plus minus. It doesn't sound right. So I'm going to get rid of that. Plus and a minus. What does a plus and a minus become? It becomes a minus. Yes, one fifth minus one quarter. All right, we're subtracting fractions. Are the denominators the same? They are not. And so we now ramp it up a little bit. We now go, oh, we've got to make those denominators the same. How? Well, if you remember from that previous video, the easiest way to do it is to take this four here and times that fraction by four. We take this five here and times that fraction by five and lo and behold, it just becomes a bit easier. Now we have to multiply the whole of that fraction by four. So when I multiply the whole of that fraction by four, the top becomes four and the bottom becomes 20. Yeah? So you have to multiply the top and the bottom by the four. We're going to do the subtraction sign, just copying it down. What are we doing to this fraction here? We're timesing both the top and the bottom by five. So that becomes five on 20. Ah, oh, fabulous. Our denominators are the same now. And so we now say that that becomes all on 20, four minus five, and four minus five when I went to school was minus one on 20. Can it be canceled down anymore? Nope, there's no numbers that go into that. And there we go. So we're getting that a little bit more harder. That's not this terrible grammatical error. We're getting a little harder each time we do this question. Oh, look what's happening now. We've got top heavy, we've got mixed numbers, we've got minuses, we've got fractions, brackets. Doesn't matter. The more you do of these, the more you're going to become a gun. So I write it out minus seven thirds, minus minus three and two thirds. That minus minus, I do not like that minus minus. It sounds wrong. And if I remember, a minus and a minus becomes a plus. Was it the same? So that minus in front of the seven thirds stays the same. That becomes a plus and that becomes three and two thirds. There's no value in doing this in your head. You're going to make silly mistakes. Now, obviously, I'm talking there to the 49% of the viewers of watching these who are boys who are going, nah, I can do it in my head. Mm -hmm. Please don't. I've always said that when you add and subtract fractions, turn mixed numbers into top heavy. How do we do that? I take the big number, which is three. I multiply it by the bottom of the fraction, three. I add two, which gives me 11. And then I know that that is all over this value of three. So that becomes minus seven thirds plus 11. Thirds. Now again, not sure what I'm doing here. Go back. There is a video. It explains all of this to you. Are the denominators the same? They absolutely are. So that all becomes on three. There is minus seven plus 11. And so what is minus seven plus 11? Minus seven plus 11. 11, uh, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Four. Okay, which is now going to give me the answer of four on three. Is that my final answer? Nope, because it is top heavy. And so four divided by three goes in one whole one, remainder one, so it must be one and one third. Now we move on to probably the easier ones. And when I taught this video before, we said that multiplication and division are by far the simplest things to do. So write the question out without the bracket so that my brain can process that negative sign. And now I ask myself the question, is there a plus or a minus? No. Is there two together? No. So now I've got a multiply or a divide. I can ignore the signs for the moment. Let's just do the fraction work first. Let's just do two thirds times four fifths. We don't need to make the bottoms the same. Multiplication is the easier one. So if you remember, we do the top two multiply together, which gives me eight and the bottom two multiply together, which gives me 15. So there's my fraction business. Now what am I going to do? I'm going to do a positive in front of there and a negative there and a positive and a negative becomes a negative. Now my advice to you is actually follow through and put the signs there because without it, this line here would actually be bad working out and you would lose exams for it. So maybe when I say do it in your head or ignore the signs, put them in, but just realize you're doing the fraction stuff first. Can eight on 15 be canceled down? Nope, so we leave it at that. Oh, another multiplication sign, but two negatives in this one. So minus six fifths times minus three quarters. All right, I'm going to do the fraction stuff first. So I'm going to do six fifths times three quarters. Don't have to worry about making the bottoms the same. I do six times three, which is 18. I do five times four, which is 20. 
There we go. So there's my multiplication done. Now I'm going to look at my signs. A negative and a negative, they're the same. So they become a positive. And that's my final answer. Yes? Because I can cancel down. They're both even numbers. So that can become 9 on 10. And are we finished? We are finished because no number goes into 9 and 10 except 1. We got some division questions. Life is awesome. Again, take the bracket out. Minus 2 fifths divided by minus three quarters. Now the first things first, remember, we can't do divide questions, but we can go to Kentucky chicken that is fried, Kentucky chicken that is fried, or keep, change, flip. So I'm gonna keep that first fraction the same. I'm gonna change that to a times, and then I'm gonna flip that over. All right, so the four was on the bottom, it goes on the top, and the three was on the top, it goes on the bottom, and now I've got a multiplication so life is good. I don't have to worry about anything other than doing the multiplication. So I'm going to do 2 times 4, which is 8. 5 times 3, which is 15. And now I'm going to look at my two signs. A negative and a negative becomes a, a positive. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, my final answer. Last example. Wow, this video has gone relatively quickly. But uh, hopefully it is just showing you how to combine negative numbers and fractions together. So last one. Minus 1 and 1 third. So I'm going to leave that for the moment because I've got a divide sign. So minus 1 and 1 third divided by 3. Okay. So keep, change. What does 3 become? Well, if you remember, any whole number is the same as the whole number divided by 1. So that's the same as 3 on 1. And when we flip, we flip them over. So 1 goes on the top and 3 goes on the bottom. Okie dokie. That's fine. I've got a mixed number. So what am I going to do? I'm going to turn it top heavy, yep, so I end up with the big number, which is the one, times the denominator, which is the three, plus the numerator, which is one. So three plus one is four, so that becomes minus four on three. Remember, the reason it's divided by three is because that number there is a three as well. So that's minus four thirds. We're gonna times that by one third, and is it a plus or a minus? No, it's a time, so we can ignore the signs for a moment. So we're gonna do four times one, which is four, 3 times 3, which is 9, and then if you remember, now I go back and do my signs, which is a negative, and a positive, which is a negative, and there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of this particular video. Now the rest of the videos in this series are just going to do with decimals and percentages and fractions, and it's just going to get more and more and more, and hopefully you'll stay with me, and I will help you to make sense of it, but practice makes perfect. You've got to find some questions to do, and keep practicing. Make mistakes. Get to someone, a teacher, someone and say, where have I gone wrong? That's when you will learn. There's no point doing hundreds of questions and getting more right because it's a bit boring. Get to the harder questions if you need to. All right, I'm gonna move on to my next video. So thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already done so, if you can click the doohickey and subscribe, I would be greatly, deeply and gratefully appreciative. Uh, otherwise, I look forward to seeing you maybe in the next video. Spread the word about this one. Take care, stay safe. Bye-bye.